So I've been asked to introduce myself as a teacher. I decided I would do it from my basement whiteboard, which has been a huge part of my semester this semester. And I've put all my questions up here just to kind of remind me of what I've been asked. But basically, hi, I'm Ed Moulton. I teach math here at Manor. Uh, my specialty is statistics. I got a master's in statistics after getting an uh, undergraduate degree in math and economics and getting a master's in math education. But STAT is what has most recently sparked my interest. Um, I got my degree at Temple University. I did a huge project that I really enjoyed where we used data from 10 years of data in basketball games to determine who we believed would win NBA games in the future showed that it was statistically significant. I put a lot of hours into it and absolutely loved it. I have kind of a uh, natural passion for sports. I was never great at them, a little short, but I love watching them, I love studying them, and really the data aspect of sports has always grabbed me, and it's something that I rediscovered as I was doing my statistics masters and still keeps me interested on some of the cutting edge things in statistics. Um, why I'm passionate about math, I love math, always have. I had the pleasure of having two parents who were both college math professors. So pleasure, privilege, whatever you want to call it, it made it so that I was always being given math lessons from like preschool. And it's something that it wasn't a chore to me. It was something I genuinely loved and always wanted to pursue. So math for me has it just been shown to me as the way the world works and something that's always been a part of my life. And I want other people to see it the way I do. I want you to understand how powerful math is and how important it is to grasp certain concepts that can be applied across many things that seem to be unrelated to math. Um, the reason I love manner, definitely the personal interaction and attention. When I taught at Temple, I had 45 to 50 students in my class for 50 minutes where I sat and I talked for 40 of those minutes. Maybe every now and then a student would ask a question, but it seemed more like the protocol was sit, take notes. Not the case when I've been at Manor. I rarely get through a class where I can't find a way to make sure that somebody's asking me something, make sure that I have that kind of one-on-one -on -one attention where if anybody's confused, I hope to see it on their face and say, hey, can we do something to stop this confusion? I would say that it has much more of a feel of a smaller environment where it's almost like seminar classes. It's something that I just really enjoy about teaching is when I can see right away, okay, that question tells me I didn't do this right or that question tells me I did a great job of this. Great question. That's exactly what you should be thinking about next. Let's see the next slide that tells us exactly that. And really, when I was a high school teacher at a younger age, I was given the opportunity to do a workshop on questioning where they just really talked about how important it is to make sure your lessons generate those questions and make sure that you're not just assuming everybody gets it as you're standing in front of the room. Coming back to why it's important to matter, at Temple I felt like I was not applying that at all. I, I've taught five or six other colleges as well where I had large lecture classes and it just it didn't feel like I was making sure anybody was getting anything until the test came. At Manor, that's not the case. I know pretty early on if somebody's struggling, if they're not struggling, even now when we're doing it through the lens of a pandemic, I have these one-on-one -on -one interactions through emails, I have these one-on-one -on -one interactions through live class sessions where I'm at this whiteboard and trying to take questions from students who are zoomed in, um, basically, I think that even under these circumstances, the amount of attention that you can get and the amount of help that you can get is unrivaled. Favorite aspect of the job kind of comes back to this idea. And again, I kind of miss it in the way that it could be, but I've always loved my office hours. Anytime a student's struggling, I always say, hey, did you remember that I have these office hours? Any chance you could come by then? Basically, I tutored for I'd say five years of my life as a side hustle to have some income and I always enjoyed that idea of just one-on-one, -on -one. I see where you're at, I see where we need to go next, and just that individual attention is something that I think is one of my strongest suits. So I always encourage students to come to office hours. I have office hours in the Learning Center when we're on campus, and basically love it when I can sit with a student and really directly answer what they need. 
for the office hours that we've done online, I feel like in some classes it's been wonderful and those students are curious and are asking questions and I do get that feel from it. And then in other classes, I feel like I might have just gotten a few more shy students. I'm gonna do everything I can to make sure as we build towards the spring semester that I'm gonna get more interaction, get more students to ask me the questions that they need answered. It's my favorite aspect because that's really, to me, what teaching is about, is really responding to what the confusion is and giving students the opportunity to advance their individual learning. A unique factor about the program. So math kind of underpins all the programs. I would say that for me, the algebra and stats classes that I mainly teach are definitely ones that are incredibly useful across a number of fields. I feel like the core of what I teach at Manor is really important and I want to expand that. Specifically, I want to expand that into more classes about data, about managing data, about processing it. Statistics is really the study of data at its heart and we have all these tools at uh, our fingertips nowadays with how powerful computers are and how many great software programs there are. We can do things with data that was never possible in the past. It extends to the fields of medicine. It extends to epidemiology as they're studying these viruses. There's advanced data models that are helping us make decisions that are saving lives. It extends to the stock market. It extends to sports, as I mentioned earlier. It's something where just basically studying data and how to process data is going to become so incredibly important to everyone's life that if you're on the outside looking in and you don't have that basic understanding of what are the underpinnings of statistics, what are the underpinnings of algebra, it's gonna keep you out of conversations that you want to be in, where basically this information that's going to be presented to you in a variety of forms, you wanna be able to be skeptical when you should be skeptical. You wanna be able to say, you know, wait a second, the way that they're asking that question is misleading. I think this data is skewed for that reason. You want to be able to say to yourself, I'm not just going to take what people are telling me, but I want to be able to look at the real facts behind it. And again, that's the future to me. Understanding how to use data is going to only become more important. As far as a fun fact about myself, I say I was a nomad in my 20s. I grew up around here, so I went to Wissick in high school and with a PA here for all 18 years I was growing up. Went to school down in North Carolina. And after I got out of school, I made a kind of deal with my parents that I was gonna explore cities for a few years and kind of take jobs that would both give me a chance to see if it was a career I wanted to pursue, but also give me a chance to see a new city. So I moved from Philadelphia. I first went to San Diego, then I went to Indianapolis, then I went to Richmond, Virginia, then I went to San Jose, California, then I went to Las Vegas, Nevada, then I went to Baltimore, Maryland. Then I went to Norfolk, Virginia. And basically in those 10 years, I spanned those seven cities where I lived in them anywhere from six months to two years. Made some great friends along the way, but kind of said, all right, this probably isn't for me. Let's see the next place. In Norfolk, I was teaching uh, full-time as a high school teacher. And at the end of the semester, it turned out that I was a budget cut. They wanted to move me to another school within the district, but I was kind of like, you know, I've put in two years here. I learned everybody here. I liked the faculty, but if I'm going to have to move, I might as well go home. And at that point, I came back to Philly, reconnected with my now wife. We have three lovely children, and I'm here with roots to stay. But I definitely like to look back on my 20s and say that I've seen some things, had a great time, and... I'm glad that I was able to get out and explore. So that's definitely something I find fun about myself.